What's going on guys? My name is Dave and we are at the Reef Aquarium Shop here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, and when I say that we are at the Reef Aquarium Shop, I mean we are next door in the offices for the Reef Aquarium Shop. Uh, we are basically in a set of warehouses over here where we operate all of our corporate stuff. Uh, we have our maintenance department, uh, social media and digital marketing over here. Hello. Uh, all of our coral propagation. This is where we receive all our products. So uh, the warehouse is almost as busy as the store uh, sometimes. Um, so uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, how's it going, y'all? What is up, Rob? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad to have you back. Uh, so this is our Monday night, uh, early evening, I guess, Q&A. Uh, we start typically at 4.30 and I try to wrap up in time to uh, get you over to hang out with Corey as well and you can just have a whole fish-tastic evening. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to operate this as usual. Send me your questions uh, and I will answer them at any point uh, that I notice them. Um, I would try to keep my eye on them over there. Uh, but uh, I, this is a little different than what I had planned on this evening. I wanted to talk uh, specifically about saltwater and I had arranged uh, our coral propagation manager uh, and warehouse manager to come over here with me and uh, talk about saltwater stuff specifically. But he is actually en route uh, to pick up some corals from the airport right now. So that couldn't happen currently. That's fine. So I decided to talk about stocking and um, uh, compatibility. Uh, and you can absolutely throw me saltwater questions. Uh, I'm just not quite as knowledgeable as some of the, uh, some of the other employees are. Uh, but I can absolutely get your questions answered. Uh, and if I don't know the answer, I'm going to tell you I don't know the answer. Uh, so, uh, yeah, drop your questions in the comments if you have them. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to start some spiels before we get into some general stocking. Um, if you haven't noticed yet, over on our Facebook page, and I'm going to pop that up here. Uh, over on our Facebook page, we have our uh, finalists for our pumpkin carving contest. Last week, I carved my pumpkin live for our staff pumpkin carving contest. This is the one that is open to all of our customers. Uh, the winner is going to get a $20 gift certificate, a reef t-shirt, and their winning entry into our calendar uh, that we are going to be making at the end of the year. They'll also be getting a copy of that calendar as part of their prize pack once we get those in. Uh, so these, uh, as you can see, are some amazing entries. I'm super stoked about them. Uh, the first one here uh, was uh, is quite detailed. I am, I am stoked about it. And right now, I think that one's in the lead uh, with 51 reactions there. Uh, looks like a gold nugget or similar pleco on some driftwood. And I love the the detail work on the driftwood as well as the pleco. And you can, if you look real close, uh, I don't know if you can, you might be able to see it on your screen. You might not, uh, but go to our Facebook page and open up this uh, 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 photo uh, to see the detail work, um, uh, you know, bigger and in front of you. Um, and while you're at it, vote for one of these. Uh, this is the other one, uh, different approach, uh, and it's not just your standard pumpkin carving either, like they didn't just carve a fish into it, the entire pumpkin is a fish, and I love that. Uh, it was so cool, got the big old mouth there, the fins, and they even took a section, uh, what I assume they cut out of the mouth, uh, they would have to be. Um, and, and attached that to the back end for the tail. I thought that was super clever. Um, so very, very cool um, and some good light in there. They must be using a, either an LED or a, a bigger candle or something. Um, but yeah, those are the uh, finalists for our contest. So absolutely head over to our Facebook page, uh, The Reef Indie. Uh, and you can find us at the Reef Aquarium Shop as well if you just search us as, as that. Um, but uh, our tag is the Reef Indie there as well. Um, but go over and vote for your favorite simply by reacting to your favorite one. 
um, and go ahead and give that whole post a share and let your friends vote on that too. That would be fantastic. Uh, the master lists are now new, um, as you can see here. So with the master lists, uh, hey, Spencer, what's going on? Welcome to the chat. Again, if you're just joining us, drop your questions in the comments. Uh, anything aquarium keeping will do uh, here in a little bit. I'm going to start talking about compatibility and tank stocking ideas. So if you had any questions pertaining to that, you can go ahead and drop those. Uh, but it doesn't have to pertain to that either. So yeah, welcome, welcome. Uh, master lists. I am excited to have a new form of master list. I'm not going to uh, uh, scroll because it's been, this is week two um, and that'd be a lot of scrolling, but the old master list, we did it in two separate posts, saltwater and freshwater. And, uh, and it was all, it was all in the order that we received them. It was not in like alphabetical order. So you couldn't just look at it and see, okay, what cichlids did they get? What angels did they get? Uh, uh, what kind of wrasse? I mean, yes, you could see all that, but it wasn't all grouped together like that. So um, you can actually look at the new master list, uh, click the link, um, and I'll have photos posted up on the, uh, on that uh, uh, post that I post this link to. Uh, and it's going to take you to... <sighs> oh, this did it in a separate... Hang on, let me... And it's going to take you to... <laughs> Apologies, this opened up in a separate tab, and I'm only sharing this tab. There we go. Uh, so here's uh, the reefindie.com. Uh, uh, that's the main page there. When you hit the link, it's going to take you directly to the stock list. Uh, but uh, since we just went outside of it, the reefindie.com. Uh, you can actually uh, learn a little bit about our freshwater, saltwater, see some reviews. You can book a service online, which is awesome. Directions uh, gives you what's uh, what's new, uh, what services we provide, a um, little bit of our accolades there, brands. Uh, and very, very, very soon, um, you are going to be able to purchase some stuff from our uh, website. Actually, before we get into the in-stock, I know I'm going on a little rabbit hole here, but hey, that's what happens. Uh, you can actually purchase things, uh, gift certificates uh, from our website currently, but that is the only thing. Uh, in the very near future, we are about to open that up to um, what you see, what you get, driftwood, uh, rocks, and substrates. Uh, so you'll actually be able to see a picture of a piece of driftwood, uh, and when you purchase that piece, you are getting that exact piece, uh, which is pretty great. Uh, we don't have that quite uh, set up the way we want to yet, uh, but we are we are so close to there. But right now, uh, you can get gift certificates on the website. Um, but let's uh, let's talk about what I came here to talk about uh, on Facebook. When you hit the master list link, it's going to take you here, um, which is what's new this week. And as you can see there, it's going to give you a breakdown between freshwater plants and saltwater. Uh, and look, it's alphabetized. Yay. It even like if you, you can go uh, Africans uh, will be separated from standard South and Central American cichlids. South Central Americans are typically just going to be labeled as cichlids. And sometimes uh, Africans will make it into that as well. But typically you're going to see Africans first. Uh, but yeah, you can divide it into Africans, um, algae eaters, angels, barbs, uh, catfish. Uh, all of our live plants are listed in alphabetical order. Um, marine, we still got to work on that a little bit um, just because this is, uh, we're essentially just taking the way we um, file things and have them listed in our point of sale system and loading them over onto the website. Uh, and, and that's what's alphabetizing for us. But as you can see, we label things marine that are saltwater, and that's always going to be what comes up first. Uh, so we're going to work around that very soon. Uh, I mean, it, for the most part, you got filefish, gobies. Uh, we're, we're a little off here with dartfish. <laughs> uh, it's not alphabetical. But we're getting there, constantly upgrading the way we do things. I just, I love this a lot better. You go back to the... Uh, uh, the website there. Well, let me actually take us to the, there we go. Uh, yeah. And so you take us back there and you can actually see, um, the pictures of the different fish that we got in, uh, and all that. So 
that's pretty exciting. Glad to have that in the works. Uh, so yeah, um, and I'm actually going to uh, kind of look off of our in stock, and uh, that's what I'm going to use to kind of spit out some tank stocking ideas um, and kind of go over that list that we got in. Um, so yeah, um, I think I went over everything that I wanted to in the beginning here. I'm just making sure that I've uh, gotten through everything before I uh, start more start more spiels. Um, but yeah, we've got the contest happening currently. Um, definitely go check that out. Vote for your favorite pumpkin. Uh, and yeah, let's talk about some stocking and compatibility ideas. And again, if you're just joining us, welcome. Thanks for being here. If you have any questions, uh, we're talking about tank compatibility, uh, fish compatibility, um, and stocking ideas for different types of tanks. So if you have any questions pertaining to those things, drop them in the comments and I will be happy to answer them for you. Um, and until I get some comments, I'm going to kind of just go over some fish that we got in the store last week. Um, obviously it's Monday. Um, so, uh, I don't think, um, other than that shipment of corals, uh, that's coming in, uh, that's being picked up from the airport right now. Um, some of those are going over to the store right off the bat. Some of them are coming over to the warehouse. So, um, uh, and he may have, uh, just gotten back with those. Uh, he still won't be able to join us cause he's got a work on splitting those corals up and stuff like that. Um, but you should be able to see some new coral stock in the store uh, in moments if you drop by. Um, so let's look at the list again, and I'm going to pop this up on the tab and the screen again. Uh, but we're going to take a look at the list here and go over a few of these. Uh, you can't see it very well that way. Can you see it better this way? Hopefully. Um, so uh, the first thing on the freshwater end of the list over here, um, can you can you see my... No, you can't. So I can't even highlight this for you. And there we go. Uh, so the first thing over here uh, on the freshwater end is Cremensis. Now, Cremensis are an African cichlid, and they actually stay pretty small. Um, you can do them in... They want to be in harder water, typically. Um, so Indiana tap is perfect for them. Uh, if you are here in Indiana and trying to keep some crebensis, uh, they are a cichlid, African cichlid, uh, but they tend to remain calmer than, uh, your other cichlid species. I would still categorize them as semi-aggressive. Um, so you could keep them with, uh, barbs, garamis, um, uh, quicker fish like danios. I wouldn't keep them in with any like, um, smaller tetras or anything, but some decent sized tetras would be fine. Um, nothing that they can really like focus in and bully on um, is going to be perfectly fine. They're going to kind of set up a little cave area uh, and they'd be perfectly fine with that. Uh, you can also keep them um, with a, a few different types of uh, Africans as well, but because they're a little less aggressive than your other African species, um, you're not typically going to want to stick them with like Mabunas or even like Tanganyikans and, and, you know, I, I've seen them with like uh, Haps, Peacocks, things of that nature. Again, they do stay smaller. So uh, sometimes they'll end up getting picked on if you end up with a real jerk. Uh, so watch that. Uh, but they're a gorgeous fish. Uh, if you ever get a chance to keep them, I do recommend it. Um, and they can probably fit in like a, I've kept them in as small as like a 20 long. Um, I like to give them some floor space because they do, um, they do actually uh, utilize that space uh, a lot. Um, so I, I feel like your footprint is more important than your, your total gallons. So the, the 20 long is the same footprint, the same base uh, length uh, and width as a 29 gallon. Um, so uh, they'd probably be a little more comfortable in there. That way they have a little more room. Um, but yeah, you can pull them off in something smaller if you wanted uh, to kind of really dig down and focus on them um, and and make that basically just a, uh, I don't know, two to four fish kind of kind of tank if you're going into 20 long with them. 
uh, but that'd be fine. And then you don't need uh, compatibility because you're just going to keep them with each other. Um, let's see here. What else do we go? Let's check out some saltwater stuff. Um, I typically, uh, since most of my expertise is in freshwater, I end up neglecting the, uh, the saltwater fish a little bit. So let's pick one of those. Um, honestly, most of these, uh, so I'm looking at uh, our list here. We've got the green file fish, uh, the blue dot watchman, um, dart fish, which is the uh, fire fish, uh, the red fire fish, uh, the blue mandarin gobies, the dragonettes, Hector's goby, pink spot, uh, lunar wrasse. Most of these are fairly easy to uh, to keep together. You don't want to keep gobies together in salt water, uh, multiple species of gobies typically. And that really that goes the same with most of your saltwater fish. Uh, for example, you don't want to have two tangs, two butterflies, two gobies. Uh, you want to pick one species of those things and kind of stick with it. There are absolutely exceptions to that rule, uh, but as a general rule of thumb, Kind of pick one of each uh, general species of fish and uh and, and roll with that one uh, for example a couple wrasse are going to to not get along together and while we're talking about wrasse um i'm looking at the lunar wrasse here on the bottom of the list um they can tend to be i would put them more in the uh, semi-aggressive i wouldn't keep them with any small fish um and they can uh they can be jerks um so you want to watch that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of different races can be real jerks. There's some calmer ones for sure, um, but I've I've known some lunar wrasse to pick on some smaller fish specifically. Um, nice thing about uh, saltwater fish in general, as long as you size them similarly similarly and pick uh, one of each different type of fish instead of doing multiples. Uh, you're gonna have the, they're gonna get along for the most part um, and and again obviously there's gonna be some exceptions to that rule but um, but yeah as long as you're similar sized um, or at least um, the fish the smaller fish can't fit in your larger fish's mouth um, typically you're okay <laughs> um, I actually find saltwater fish a lot easier to mix uh, as far as you know what can go with what uh, in I, I find saltwater fish way easier than freshwater fish um, with freshwater fish you have so many different kind of pockets of uh, different personalities and types that uh, that it can be a little uh, difficult a little limiting if you're picking certain fish um, so yeah honestly saltwater is is pretty easy to to kind of just hey i like this type of fish that should work in my tank <laughs> as long as you don't have another type like uh like if you're trying to do a lunar wrasse and a christmas wrasse so don't don't they're gonna fight uh the the blue dot watchman goby and uh well i wouldn't do the hector's goby the hector's goby is gonna stay way too small but you wouldn't want to do like a blue dot and a pink spot uh goby together because they're just gonna uh, have at it um, on the bottom of that tank, <laughs> my, uh, my mind comes to a, a YouTube video that I've seen of two gobies, uh, digging their holes and they're right next to each other and they're just dumping their sand on each other. Um, and that's hilarious, but, uh, it can actually escalate to a lot more, uh, dangerous situations than that. So, uh, try to avoid it. Um, I'm going to come back over to the freshwater side. Um, I was talking about cribs a second ago, uh, but now I kind of want to bring up quarries. I've got a decent amount of quarries uh, that came in last week. Uh, not only that just came in last week, but uh, that we already had in stock. Oops. Um, I've got, what was it like? nine or 12 different types of quarries in stock right now, which is awesome. I love quarries. Uh, so if you're looking for a good quarry variety, drop by and check them all out. Uh, last week, new in stock, we got albinos, pandas, uh, pygmies, which are super cool. They stay real tiny, uh, and Schwartz eye, which are really neat. 
Um, but we've also got some like uh, adult eyes. Uh, we've got some really nice, uh, real big sized emerald quarries in right now. Uh, and I really enjoy quarries because they're another fish or they're one fish that can be very, very versatile. I've even seen people keep quarries in with African cichlids and, and they don't get messed with. Uh, I do recommend like picking one of the larger species like the emeralds, um, the albinos, paleotis, um, something that's going to get a little more heft to them uh, if you're going to do it that way. But because they're catfish and so armored, um, I don't know if you've ever tried to... Uh, <laughs> tried to touch a quarry uh, or, you know, pick it up with a net, um, uh, it, you'd notice their uh, their dorsal and their pectoral fins are just spikes, their spines. Um, and if anything tries to mess with them, they're only going to mess with them once uh, and they'll learn their lesson and not do it again. Uh, so they can be kept all the way up into some aggressive situations. Definitely not all, but um, they're fairly comfortable and, um, and semi-aggressive. Um, they are actually themselves a community fish, uh, so they're perfectly fine in a community setting as well. They're just scavengers. Um, and I think we had the question come up last week of someone wanting to grab some quarries uh, and asking me how many quarries to grab. Uh, and I said as many as you can. That still holds true, of course. Um, because they uh, really do well in much larger numbers. And I typically, if you have the space for them, if you have a really big tank, uh, go for a couple dozen. Um, and it's not till about those numbers where you're usually going to see some cool wild type activity, like whole tank swimming. And uh, and they just, they hang out in this massive group. It's super neat. Um, but if you're going to do quarries, do a a bare minimum of six. Um, and I always uh, try to do more than six at a time um, or six in total. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll pop in like two or three quarries here or there. But if you can, if you're trying to establish and get a brand new school of quarries, go for six right off the bat. And yeah, you can add two, three singles here and there if you want to. Um, but, but yeah, give them some numbers. Uh, and, and they're really cool. You can stick some quarry species in as small as a 20 gallon. Others are going to definitely need a larger tank um, uh, and, and need a little more room. Uh, some of those bigger species, but for example, those pygmies, you can keep them in a real small tank. A 10 gallon uh, is typically fine for those pygmies. But again, we're going to want those numbers too uh, in that tank because the pygmies, they're only going to get about an inch. Um, and there's a couple different uh, types of them, two or two, three, four, there's probably like a dozen pygmy quarries <laughs> types out there. Um, the ones we see the most are the pygmaeus um, with the pinstripe uh, uh, pattern through them. Uh, then we'll see the habrosis, which is uh, more of a mottled kind of spotty pattern. Um, and then there's the hastatus as well, which is a little similar but uh, uh, to the hasbrosis, but different. Um... And that's my spiel on Corey's. And if you're just joining us, welcome. Thanks for joining. Uh, and we are going over compatibility uh, and uh, compatibility and, and basically just uh, tank stocking ideas. Um, speaking of tank stocking ideas, I guess I uh, didn't go over, you know, I guess what else. It's just such a broad range on the Corey's. You can keep them anywhere from... Um, like I said, in some um, aggressive fish situations, um, to semi-aggressive, uh, they're they're great with like severums um, and and barbs uh, are fine with those. I mean, really, they're just so versatile and can be put with so much um, that yeah, you can you can toss them in just about anything. Um, I'm real excited to have the albino porthole cats in. Um, if you're familiar with porthole cats, they're a really neat kind of almost torpedo-shaped catfish. Uh, they're going to get about uh, five inches, I think, off the top of my head. Let's see here uh, and confirm that. But uh, they're a super cool one. Uh, they're another one that I would kind of put in the um, in the oddball category, but they're a semi-aggressive. Catfish, really, because they they can pick off some, some smaller fish, but... They're not gonna. They're not gonna like actively like go after your fish. 
four inches. I was close with five inches. Uh, so yeah, they max out at about four inches. Um, and yeah, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty peaceful. Um, they have these, uh, they have super tiny mouths. So for a catfish, uh, they can't really do much damage to, to anything. Uh, but I, again, I still don't keep them with like super tiny stuff. I'm not going to keep them with like, uh, uh, chili rasboras or ember tetras even. Um, and I probably even wouldn't keep them with like, I don't know. I'd probably keep them with neons. Yeah. Um, but potentially that would be a risk once the, uh, once the portal was, was full grown. Um, but yeah, you can get, keep them uh, again all the way from from community to, to semi aggressive, uh, but they'll probably porthole cats uh, will get picked on by some more aggressive fish. Um, let's see here. Let's try to find one that's a little odd. That one's odd. Um, the marble, uh, the marble goby. Uh, also known as the water cow. We get these in from time to time. Um, we've actually been able to get a hold of them a lot more recently. Uh, they've been available uh, and <laughs> they get they get huge. Uh, not not massive. They'll they'll cap out, I think, at like 18 to 20 inches. Uh, the one we have in stock right now is sitting at a good foot or so. Uh, sometimes we'll get them in um, and they are like, uh, I don't know, six, seven inches. Uh, but that's typically, that's typically rare. Usually we'll see like a Jade Goby in that range, but not a water cow. Um, but the Jade Gobies stay smaller at like eight, nine inches. Water cows, however, um, they get, they get larger. Um, I've actually had those, uh, had one of them on our Instagram, um, fairly recently. Uh, and I'll try to pull that up for you real quick. But because they get so hefty, they have huge mouths. Um, you're going to want to keep them with larger fish. Now, here we go. Uh, they aren't um, they aren't aggressive. I'm not. They're not an aggressive fish. But they will absolutely eat whatever fits in their mouth. There they are. <laughs> that is a uh, that is a, a water cow, aka marble goby. Um, but yeah, it gives you some. Uh, and this is our Instagram page, if you're wondering. And if you're not following us on on Instagram, uh, this is we kind of use this whole space as a um, care guide <laughs> sheet posting area. Uh, we'll just post pictures of our fish, corals, plants, um, and some other things. Uh, and tell you kind of a quick guide on how to care for those things and what they're going to need. Um, so as you can see, I have his temperament down as peaceful, um, <laughs> but that that mouth it's it's huge. <laughs> so really, you want to keep it with other larger fish. Um, and as long as it uh, as long as it gets over like I'd say eight nine inches, um, maybe like. Um, let's say uh maybe jack dempsey or um green terror thanks myself <laughs> i couldn't come up with green terror uh jack dempsey green terror things of that nature uh that would be cool with them um but again uh the heftier the better uh you can even do some calmer stuff like the, you know it says they're they're peaceful you can do other peaceful larger fish like uh, tin foil barbs um potentially like some larger species of silver dollars, but I'd be afraid that uh, in the end they might get snatched up when this guy gets heft to him. Um, but yeah, some, maybe some other larger catfish, sun cats, things of that nature that like what we were just talking about, the portal cats, they're, they're not going to be a good mate long-term. They'll just get swallowed. Um, but yeah, essentially anything that doesn't fit in his mouth, that's not going to like rip him up. Um, and he's, while they are peaceful, they definitely use their weight literally to defend themselves. Uh, or like I've seen, 
I've seen like we'll introduce a uh, a new Marvel Gobi into our 450 gallon monster tank, uh, and we'll have obviously some uh, other fish in there that are established. Uh, that these can range from you know we've had Texas cichlids, we've had flower horns in there um, from time to time, as long as they're not total jerks. <laughs> um, uh, green terrors. I think in this instance it was a green terror that was uh, starting to be a jerk to this water cow that we had just dropped in there. Um, like a nine, 10 inch, uh, green terror was coming after him and kind of giving him some crap. Uh, and he literally, the, the water goby just kind of pulled back a little bit and like body checked this fish. Uh, the green terror went, uh, went away and never messed with him again. Um, but yeah, I mean, he doesn't really have the, uh, the, uh, tools to be uh, like aggressive uh, if that makes sense um, but he does have plenty of size and weight to throw around if anyone gives him any crap so while I wouldn't keep him with like flower horns or uh, probably not even like uh, I wouldn't do red devils dovi um, you know anything of that nature uh, I say green terrors and Jack Dempsey's because they stay a little smaller than those things I just mentioned. Typically, uh, Oscars are fine with these guys, um, and as well as some of the calmer fish that I mentioned. Um, he's uh, They do great with our Stingray, our Mataro Stingray that we have in the 450. Um, pike cichlids are great as long as they're one of the larger species. We had ours with a zebra pike, any of your bigger plecos. Um, so yeah. Plenty of things you can still keep this with, but uh, make sure it's sizable. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just going to be uh, a, probably an expensive snack um, is what it'll end up being. Uh, so that's the water cow, a.k.a. Marble Gobi. Uh, running back to our in-stock list. And again, if you're just joining us, we're looking at our website here. Uh, and also, uh, welcome if you're just joining us. Drop your questions in the comments. Right now we're talking about general compatibility and popping some, uh, giving some ideas off of our most recent in stock list, which was updated on the 22nd on Friday. Uh, it's updated every Friday. And, uh, uh, and yeah, so we're looking at some of these things, kind of getting ideas for what we could put with them, what kind of tank they could go into, uh, and vice versa. If you have any questions for me pertaining to that type of thing, uh, maybe you have a, a stock list of, you know, fish in your tank and you're wanting to add one or two more and need some ideas, toss it at me. I'm glad to help you figure that out, uh, where you want to know with, uh, if certain fish, uh, can go together can answer that for you as well. Drop that in the comments, uh, and I will, again, be happy to answer that. Um, let's take a barb. I want to do tiger barbs. Um, we got a few different types. Right now, we have four, four different types of tiger barbs. Uh, the standard, the albino, green, and platinum green. The platinum greens are super cool. They're all the same fish, um, just different color variants of the same fish. So, uh, tiger barbs are super cool, but they are very nippy. They can absolutely be jerks. Um, people underestimate them uh, a lot, uh, I'm, myself included. I'm always the first to jump on, oh, tiger barbs would be great in that tank, and I'll stick them in a tank, and tiger barbs were not great in that tank. <laughs> they ended up being jerks. Um, uh, speaking of which, the, the larger the school of tiger barbs, the uh, calmer they tend to be. Usually they're going to keep that aggression within themselves, but they're absolutely not limited to keeping that aggression within themselves. Uh, the, again, larger numbers helps with that, um, but if you have like three to five tiger barbs, they're, they're going to be real big jerks to, to most of the inhabitants of the tank. Um, so with that in mind, you want to keep them with other semi-aggressive things. I tend to use them as kind of schoolers or dithers for like semi-aggressive cichlids. Such as severums, blood parrots. Um... I've kept them with like Aquadens Mites, uh, Blue Acaras, Electric Blue Acaras, Geophagus. They make great dithers uh, and kind of complementary schoolers to Geophagus um, and that kind of fish. Uh, so that's typically where I tend to stick them. Um, 
Definitely don't stick them with more community fish. Uh, they're again, they're just going to be jerks. They're fin nippers for sure. Nothing long finned. Um, even like okay, so you know, angels. Angels are semi aggressive. <laughs> Never stick them with angels. You'll end up with finless uh, and and eventually dead angels. Uh, but uh, but yeah, tiger barbs are still great. Lots of cool colors. You can actually since they are all the same fish, all those color variants are the same fish. You can keep them to together and they will still school tightly together uh like your other uh like your other schoolers that look exactly the same so i i will put all four of those types that i mentioned together and just i call it the skittles mix of uh tiger barbs and uh and they look great in my opinion there's also i guess two more types of tiger barbs um well more than two. So the ones I was thinking of first were the uh, glowfish. There are green and red glowfish tiger barbs, uh, which look pretty cool um, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, and again, they can be mixed with your standard tiger barbs if you like that. Uh, and then the one that I just thought of uh, that made me make that awkward face was someone decided to come up with long fin tiger barbs. I don't know who, but they're in trouble with me. <laughs> um, why uh, someone would make a schooling fin nipper long finned is beyond me. Um, you typically don't see them at our store, uh, but sometimes uh, we are accidentally misshipped long fin tiger barbs uh, as standard tiger barbs. So uh, while we you can occasionally see them uh, at our at our shop, it's not typical that you will. Um, they're neat, long flowy fins, but they're always going to be uh, tattered if you're keeping them the way you're supposed to in numbers. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. But uh, I've again I kept them with like uh, garamis, um, uh, rainbows. I've kept uh, tiger barbs with rainbows before. Uh, that would be a good one. Um, most of your barb species really uh, would be fine mixed with the tigers. I've kept the gold barbs. They get, uh, they stay smaller than the tigers, but are kind of hefty enough to, to hold their own. Um, rosy barbs are great with them too. And rosy barbs are super underrated. They, uh, they need some space. Uh, they get a decent size, but, uh, give them about four feet, uh, and mix male and female together. Uh, and they're going to be just brilliantly colored. Uh, there's several variants of those as well. Um, and that's tiger barbs. Still no questions in the comments yet. This one's a slow one. That's fine. <laughs> I still have people watching, hanging out. So someone's interested in the compatibility and what I have to say about it. That's great. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let's talk. I've I've talked about a lot of semi-aggressive fish, um, and uh, I don't know that I really got any like aggressive fish in last week on the freshwater end. Um, not really. But I've been talking about freshwater. So actually, what I'm going to move on to is some saltwater fish. Now, um, we were talking about how earlier in the, uh, in the stream here, how saltwater fish are definitely, uh, well, in my opinion, saltwater fish are easier to uh, stick together uh, than freshwater fish are simply because it mostly boils down to like sizing uh, and in type as long as you're not putting the two of the same types of fish together like two tangs for the most part uh, that's general rule of thumb definitely some exceptions the tangs specifically come down to body type there's like disc, disc shaped there's like tall tangs and long tangs right uh and you can typically mix those together example yellow tang hippo tang typically will work um and there's, again, more exceptions to that. But some fish are just way more aggressive than others. Um, a lot of, like, let's say a trigger fish. That's, a, that's one that people typically know to be an aggressive fish. Um, it still comes down mostly to sizing. Um, they're going to basically, uh, most of your aggressive fish, like, uh, like puffers, triggers, um, a lot of your wrasse species, um, 
and uh, even lionfish, a lot of your lionfish, you know, depending on what uh, type of lion, um, they're all going to go after like inverts. You're not going to be able to keep inverts with these type of things, crabs, shrimp, snails, uh, all, all of those are gone if you're going for uh, a more predatory style tank. But uh, if you don't mind losing those, uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of cool predator fish that you can keep with your standard community fish uh, simply because the sizing is going to be right. Um, and, and that's, I think that's pretty cool. Um, the biggest thing that people tend to be concerned with in saltwater compatibility wise is reef compatibility. Um, and honestly, that is one of my weaker points. Um, but I can tell you uh, a few things that are not reef compatible. Mostly, um, mostly your like, uh, like I was talking about puffers and lionfish. You can actually stick those uh, for the most part, general rules here. Uh, there's always exceptions to them. You can actually stick those in a reef tank. You're just, again, gonna lose all your invertebrates. You're not keeping any snails, crabs, shrimp, uh, or anything like that. Um, starfish uh, for the most part. Um, those are all going to get taken out, but you can still keep corals and have a cool like coral predator tank. A lot of people will do like uh, a lionfish reef tank. Uh, they just don't have any shrimp, crabs, snails, or anything like that. It's a pretty neat tank, um, but uh, you are limited by that. Um, however, like uh, there's like, triggers. They're going to munch on corals a lot. Butterflies, they munch down on corals. A lot of your angel species, most of your angel species are going to munch down on corals. Um, but, um, but yeah, you can actually, most people will take those type of fish. Uh, and if you're going to keep those type of fish, uh, they're going to put them into what's called a Fowler tank, uh, uh, which is fish only, uh, live rock. Um, and, uh, and yeah, they're not going to keep any corals with those or uh, invertebrates. But those are some really cool tanks. Look up some Fowler tanks on YouTube. And the really well done ones are just are gorgeous. And have some cool fish that you really can't keep in a reef setting. Um, all right. I think I have babbled on just about enough. I don't have any uh, new questions coming in. Uh, so uh, if you did join me on this uh, this interesting Monday live, uh, I was supposed to have uh, some uh, my guest speakers uh, started, well not guest speakers, but uh, some guests uh, starting today. Um, I'm trying to get those lined up for uh, future Monday lives. Um, but that didn't happen for this week. So thanks for joining me on this impromptu talk about uh, compatibility. And uh, I guess we didn't really do any stocking ideas, but those would have come from your questions. So uh, thanks for joining me. I uh, appreciate it. On uh, Go to our Facebook page and vote for your favorite pumpkin carving. That is very important. Uh, also, if you have not yet, uh, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification as well. That way you know every time we post new content, every time we go live. Uh, speaking of going live, we will see you on Thursday uh, on Facebook when we do our room tours. We do those every week. Uh, so uh, you can see all the new stuff that came in uh, and all the stuff that's still there and looking good. Uh, again, thanks for hanging out, and we're going to see you next time.